Welcome to the first lecture of Maven. Um, before we begin, let's see uh, what Maven is all about. Now, like any other craftsman, software developers rely on their tools to build application. Developers use integrated development environment, bug tracking tools, build tools, frameworks, and debug tools. Um, they play a vital role in a day-to-day -day development and maintenance of a quality software. Um, so, um, looking at that, Maven is nothing but an open source, standard-based project management framework that simplifies a building testing, reporting, and packaging of projects. Maven's initial route are in the um, Apache Maven Jakarta project that took place um, somewhere in early 2000. And it was subsequently used in Apache Turbine project like many other, like many other Apache projects at that time. Back then, there was a strong desire for developing standard way to build projects and to share generated artifacts easily across projects. This desire gave birth to Maven and Maven 1.0 was released in uh, 2004 and followed by another version upgrade of 2.0 in 2005 and um, right now this project uses this lecture uses uh, version 3 which is the current Maven version of Maven and um, Maven has become one of the widely used open source software programs in enterprise around the world. Let's take a look at some of the reasons why Maven is so popular. The first reason is that it provides a standard directory structure. Often when we start to work on a new project, a considerable amount of time is spent deciding on the project layout and folder structure needed to store code and configuration files. These decisions can vary across projects and teams which can make it difficult for new pro developers to understand and adopt other team projects. It can also make it hard for an exciting existing developer to jump between projects and find what they're seeking. And this is where Maven uh, addresses the above problem by standardizing the folder structure and the organization of a project. It provides recommendation on where different parts of a project such as source code, test code, configuration files should reside. For example, Maven suggests that all of the Java source code should be placed in source main Java folder. This makes it easier to understand and navigate any Maven project. Additionally, these convention make it easy to switch and start using a new IDs. And IDs as we know, uh, they vary from project structure and folder name. And a dynamic web project, for example, in Eclipse, might use a web content folder to store uh, web assets, whereas Net NetBeans or uh, IntelliJ might use web pages for the same purpose, but in a different folder structure. With Maven, your projects follow a consistent structure and become ID agnostic. Maven also provides declarative dependency management. Most Java projects rely on other projects and open source frameworks to function properly. It can be cumbersome to download these dependencies manually and keep track of their version as you use them in your project. So Maven provides a convenient way to declare these project dependencies in a separate external pom.xml file. It then automatically downloads these dependencies and allows you to use them in your project. This simplifies project dependency management greatly. It is also important to note that in the pom.xml file, you specify that what and not the how. The pom.xml file can also serve as a documentation tool conveying your project dependencies and their different versions. Maven also supports plugins management. It follows a plugin based architecture making it easy to augment and customize its functionalities. This plugin encapsulates reusable build and task logic. Today, there are hundreds of Maven plugins available that can be used to carry out tasks ranging from code compilation to packaging to project documentation and generation. Maven also makes it easy to create your own plugins and hence providing a ability to integrate tasks and workflows that are specific 
to your organization another feature that makes maven so popular is uniform build abstraction maven provides a uniform interface for building projects you can build a maven project by using just a handful of commands once you become familiar with maven's build process you can easily configure out how to build over uh, how to build other maven projects and this frees up developer from having to you know learn build idiosyncrasies so they can focus more on the uh, development side of the project another feature that makes maven so popular is its tool support maven provides a powerful command line interface to carry out different operations and all the major ids today provide excellent tool support for maven additionally maven is fully integrated integrated with today's continuous integration products such as jenkins bamboo hudson and many others the last and the most powerful feature of maven is arch types as we already mentioned maven provides a standard directory structure for all its projects and when the time comes to create new maven projects you need to build each directory manually and this can easily become tedious this is where maven arch type comes to rescue maven arch types are predefined project templates that can be used to generate new projects projects created using arch type will contain all of the folders and files needed to get you going arch type is also a valuable tool for bundling best practices and common assets that you will need in each of your projects consider a team that works heavily on spring framework based web application all the spring based web projects share common dependency and require a set of configuration files It is also highly possible that all of these projects have similar log4j log4back configuration files css image and um, say apache tiles layout or site mesh decorators and maven lets team bundle these common assets into arch type when new projects get created using the arch type they will automatically have the common assets included so goodbye to copy paste or drag and drop you don't need to require any of those anymore so that brings us to the end of this lecture see you in the next lecture thank you